tell me if you guys can see me. Um, that was weird, I'm sorry. My internet disconnected. I don't know why. Did we lose her? I'm right here, Wendy. I was here all along. Oh no, I lost all of your chats. Oh, I'm sorry. I lost everyone's, there were, there were messages I hadn't answered. Okay, I'm sorry guys, that was weird. It just suddenly disconnected and it said I didn't have any internet and everything like shut down. Oh, stressful. And I lost, um, I lost, I lost your guys' chat, so I don't know if I missed anything. If I did, if you ask a question, just type it again. I scared me there. I scared me too. Uh, I had some really weird problems with my internet actually at work the other day. I'm just gonna open my window, get my curtains again. The sunset's so pretty. I wish I could show you, but I can't because it's over there. Um, yeah, I had some problems with work the other day I kept disconnecting when I was in a meeting and everyone was talking and I was leading the meeting and I'd ask someone a question and then they would talk and then um they would be talking and then my internet would like cut out but they didn't know <laughs> and then they they were talking and they came back and they had like at the end of their what they were saying and I had no idea what they, what they said so I just had to like okay great thanks and then I would like move on to the next person um yeah, so my internet, I don't know what's what's wrong with it recently. <sighs> ah, Sasha's here. Hi, Sasha. Talk more about your start on Instagram and YouTube. Just answering your question. Yes, Nina, thank you. Um, okay, so I was, yeah, Frannard, I was trying to think. I was watching Lee Ellickson, I think. I think she came on a bit later than Frannard, though. Gosh, there's so much lime green in this. Um, but yeah, Frannard was a big one. Also, Holly Exley and catnip when she was very first starting out and she was just in her her bedroom i was uh, from the very start i was watching her so i got really inspired by people doing it on youtube and i thought i can i can do it too you know um at that point i think i was a th i was in doing 3d at the time so i was used to being on computers and stuff and i kn knew how to edit so i didn't like none of that bothered me so i just thought i'd just give it a go so i started making just art videos, not studio vlogs, because I didn't I didn't have a studio or anything. Just um, you know, speed paints and stuff. And then I really like maybe a year later, I was like really loving, so inspired by studio vlogs, I thought, hey, if they can do it, why can't I do it? Why don't I make some stuff? And that's when I did I think I opened my Etsy shop maybe. I can't remember. But yeah, got into um YouTube and loved it. And uh, yeah, the rest, as they say, is a history. I'm here, but working as usual. All right, Sarah, we're working and working. Canib is the one that inspired me to start. Also, you and Emily Harvey. Oh, no way, Wendy. I didn't know that. That's so cool. About me, not about Catnip and Emily Harvey. <laughs> no, but that is cool. It's, it's cool when other people, when you get inspired by way other people. I mean, that's why I did it too, you know? I do not like this bright green. I'll tell you that for free. Um, I'm trying to figure out what the hell, what the heck this mountain is. You know, a lot of these pages are just gonna be so completely random. It's gonna be a mess. I'm trying to like look at the other pages and link everything up together, but it's fine. Once we get pencil on and neo colors, it doesn't even matter what color everything is. It'll blend in, it'll, it'll all work out, I'm sure. This is what we got so far. It looks like a hot mess, but don't don't you worry. Oh, I meant to be filming this for a YouTube video too, but I'm doing it on stream. So I guess I have to do this part on stream and the rest on YouTube. The YouTube community is so much better than the Instagram community, but that's just my experience so far. I've, yeah, I really love the YouTube community. I've met a lot of my art friends on YouTube, mainly, and then I've, chat with them on Instagram but I meet them through YouTube I think Instagram's lovely as well but I think YouTube is nice because you get to know people better <laughs> okay I don't know if you heard that sound it was the sound of the sketchbook going clonk off the end of the desk um Sasha just so I'll just quickly let you know what we're doing I'm making a accordion sketchbook 
Um, all right, cool. I'm making an accordion sketchbook, as you can tell, probably, of my walk we did the other day. Oh, I just realized I haven't done the fence. That's fine. We'll do it in the next. We'll do it with the pencil. Um, and I'm just basically stitching all of these photos of the walk together. And it's going to be really messy because I, I'm, I'm trying to get the colors right. Like, not right, but I'm trying to, like, blend them so they're not all, it's not all completely, you know, doesn't match. But it's fine. We'll get there. We'll get there. This in part, this part in the photo, this part in the walk that we did is when we were going up the third hill, and we just come down the second one. We're going up the third one, and this was like the last view that we saw before the fog rolled in. So the fog should be on the next view, which should be really fun to draw. I think. Love the idea of using the accordion sketchbook to document your journey. Yes, I thought it was very clever of maybe. <laughs> I have seen other people do it though. But I don't think, I don't think I've seen anyone, if people do a walk, maybe they have, but definitely I've seen people do a journey or uh, like maybe traveling or like a street scene, things like that. And I think that was really fun, really fun idea. So when this big walk came up, I know I wanted to do it because I have, I've been drawing probably something from every walk we've done, either in my sketchbook or like for a YouTube video. Oh, Blueberry Cat, hi. I love your name, so cool. Nice, nice idea, sketchbook, yes. I've never used one before. So it's actually, well, I don't actually like land. The funny thing is I don't actually like a landscape video. So, <laughs> I don't like a landscape sketchbook, I mean. So this is uh, a little bit out there for me. Guys, I really want to show you what the sunset looks like. I'm going to take a photo and show you, because it's so pretty. I don't know if you can see this. Look how red it is outside. Isn't that crazy? Jay Cookie, hi. Welcome to the stream. Look at my disgusting wet. I only have one sheet left though, so I gotta make the most of it, you know? Yeah, wow, I know, it's beautiful. I keep looking at it and it's gorgeous. We have the best sunsets here, I swear. Every night is so different, it's amazing. I'm trying to figure out what to do with the sky here. Bring a little bit of blue in. And I think we will go in with the white because now the fog's coming in, the clouds are coming in. It was actually really cool. Actually, have you guys ever been on a hike or a walk where all the fog's come in and you can't really see much? It That sounds kind of like it wouldn't be fun because you're like, well, I go for a hike up a mountain for a view, you know? But it's so atmospheric. I'm just trying to figure out how the... What the heck colour to draw these backgrounds? Oh, you know what? I re I remember using these uh, washers, these guashai, these jelly guashai. I used to use a lot of the white. That's why I think all the colours are looking super vibrant because I used to mix the white in with it. And I haven't used these paints for so long, I've forgotten to do that. His walks are reminding me of yours. His walks, whose walks, Casey? Did I miss something? Oh, I had a friend walk in Herodin's, H Hadrian's, Hadrian's Wall. Is that in Scotland? That's in Scotland, isn't it? I think we're really close to Hadrian's Wall. I think if we just go up maybe like an hour, we're on the border of Scotland, which is pretty cool. Your view is amazing. Is that jelly gouache? What did you do to revive it? Um, well, I, I have revived it at one point. I did it a few months ago, but you can see now it's really dry and cracked. What I did last time is I mixed in water and also um, vegetable glycerin, which I have in my cart down there, but I can't be bothered to get it, it's so far away. Uh, it's like a, it's like glycerin, it's cool. oh, I'll get it, I'll show you. All right, God, come on, I'll do it. All I have to do, I literally just have to pull the cart around. <laughs> so lazy. Here it is, it's coming, it's coming guys. Let's see if I can find it. Are you still there? Guys, don't go anywhere, I'm still here, okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's not in there. I think I must have tidied it up. Oh, I found it. Here we go. Gosh, it's dusty. Here we go. 
Vegetable glycerin. Can you see that? Oh, oh my. So I used a few drops of this and I think it's very similar. Uh, what do they put in gouache normally? Honey? Yeah, it's like that. It makes it um, wet, but obviously it's not honey. It's something else. <laughs> Vegetable glycerin. I don't know what that is, to be honest. And I just smushed it round, 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 round like this. And I did it with each one. It took like 45 minutes. As you can tell, if you're not using the, the jelly gouache frequently, it dries out anyway. So, but a little bit of water is just enough to revive it. Okay. Oh, my chair's so creaky. Your um, England. He's in Greenhead, Northumberland today. Okay, so Hadrian's Wall, though, is it in England or is it on the border of Scotland and England? Was it to keep the English out from Scotland? Or the... I'm pretty sure it has something to do with that, right? I don't know. <laughs> I, I did most of my school in, in New Zealand. And we didn't really learn much about Europe. So I always feel like I'm super ignorant when I talk about European history. Because <clears throat> I don't really know much about it. Just what I've picked up. I mean, we learned about World War II. Everyone does. But I think that was like pretty much it. <clears throat> I just recently went on vacation in Scotland and I just completely fell in love. The landscape and the light is so beautiful. And I guess the Lake District is a bit similar. Yeah, I think it probably would be. I think Scotland would probably have a, like a different kind of special. I think it, I have been there um, to Scotland and I think it's probably more rugged than what we have here. Uh, it's really beautiful though, Scotland, I do love it. And I think we're actually gonna go up there uh, hopefully soon, cause I have a friend, Sasha also, he's here. We're on the same like WhatsApp group chat and she lives in Scotland. And I may be going up there to meet her and also sell my big guillotine. If you guys remember, I have that huge guillotine you can't see it behind me right now but it's but for making notebooks like cutting notebooks and also fingers I have cut my finger twice on it so I might be selling it to her I'm meeting her in Scotland so Martin and I are going to do a little day trip and take his camera and do like photography and drawing and stuff which should be really nice looking forward to that I don't know when that's going to be though because I've got two the next two weeks are completely booked out Martin's brother one of his brothers the brother who hasn't visited yet is visiting us on the bank holiday weekend, which is this weekend in England. And so we're um, doing the, you know, the entertaining, taking people out, showing them the sights and stuff. <laughs> what a chore uh, for that weekend. And then the weekend after that is even worse. I have to go down south to my dentist because my dentist is still in the same town I lived at when we lived in Surrey because I really, he's so good and you know I hate the dentist and I hate going to the dentist so when I found someone that I was actually comfortable going with I didn't want to leave and I know it's stupid because I literally have to travel six hours each way <laughs> just to have a checkup uh but we're also going to see Martin's parents so not all it's not all complete waste of time I'm gonna go stay with Martin's parents so yeah next two weeks guys so busy how are your weekends looking you guys busy right now? I feel like we always get like busy in blocks. So we have people visiting us or we going down somewhere. Like last week, my friend came to stay for the weekend. So it's like been three weekends in a row, just seeing people. It's on the border. It was the northmost border of the Roman empire. Okay. <laughs> Katie knows more about English history than I do, which I, I should, probably should feel worse about, but I don't, to be honest. Oh, we're going to Edinburgh in October. Fun. I've never been to Edinburgh, Artie. I heard it's beautiful, though. That sunset is so pretty, guys. I can't stop staring at it. I've been wanting one of those guillotines for ages, but they randomly doubled in price. How much are they? How much have you seen them for? Because I, I looked, because I was going to sell it to her, obviously, secondhand because uh, it's been used and it has blood in it <laughs> it's actually hazardous so I was going to um I had a look on my Amazon because I got on Amazon and I got mine for 130 pounds I think 120 pounds something like that so yeah I'd be interested to know how much you're finding like how how much you're finding them around if they've doubled in price that's crazy also I hesitate 
to to ever recommend them honestly i know some people can get along with them i don't know if i'm just super clumsy but god i hated my guillotine i liked it the first couple of times like making notebooks and memo pads was really fun like when you first made them but um yeah after i had that incident when i almost cut my my finger off and then it happened again uh, like a month later i really hated using it i just I just had like a mental block and it wasn't because I was scared because I, I at that point I was like I'll just be really careful but just the F like everything you know even getting it down from the top of the everything just everything and also I don't want to make any I don't want to make products anymore I've come to the point now where I just want to outsource everything I have these stickers right now like these sticker packs and they sort out really well in my Etsy update and I should have made them again but I just uh, my print is doing this weird thing where it won't uh, take sticker paper through. It like makes this really horrible sound and it makes the sticker paper um, rotate as it's printing. And I don't want to break my printer because it's very expensive. So I just decided I'm going to outsource everything and make all my sticker packs into sticker sheets, which I still need to do. <sighs> Guys, we need more time in the world. Like 24 hours in a day is not enough. Thanks for the thorough explanation and all the effort. Mine is completely dried up. Not sure it will survive. Oh yes, no. Um, Maisel, is that how I say your name? Sorry. Definitely give it a go. Um, some water. If you don't mind using honey, you can use honey. I know that that helps too. Um, but yeah, definitely. It wouldn't have revived, honestly. If you even just like this, see how cracked this is? Oh. See how cracked that is? Is that how yours is? just look we'll do it now i'll pop some water on and we can just at the end of the stream we'll see how it is <sighs> screw it i'll just dump it in the water <laughs> i'm not going to use that color i'll be fine how did you and martin meet um we met at work it's a very boring story <laughs> we met at an old job it was martin's five jobs ago and my three jobs ago because he moves around more than me and he came in i had only been working there for like two years and he came in and he lived i lived about a half an hour from work and he lived an hour from work and he came past where i lived so he was like let's carpool because it'll be cheaper like i can drive to yours and then we can drive to and we can like share petrol and stuff so we started doing that and like, we just became friends and next thing you know romance on the motorway so yeah it was a pretty boring story it was just uh me and at work becoming friends and then moving in together so you know classic classic boy meets girl boy carpools with girl boy meets him with girl in our story i was studying for the trip oh katie i know i'm so sad katie was going to come to the uk and she was going to do a big trip and i feel so bad because she couldn't because uh the pandemic and everything stopped her from traveling and i'm sure it stopped a lot of us from traveling and katie i feel so bad about that it's so many awesome plans. Are you gonna be able to like save up again? Do you think it's so expensive now? Traveling is so expensive. Martin and I were looking at going to South Africa again because my dad lives out there and he has a and b So basically, it's if we can get out there, we it's like pretty cheap to stay out there. And the flights have doubled since the last time we went three years ago. It's crazy. I'm just completely making these colors up now. <laughs> No idea what I'm doing. Ah, uh, I'm trying to find like this super nice blue color, but it's not, it's not working. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to triage this with the pencils, aren't I? It's fine, this is just a, a base layer. Also, that's a lot of sky that I'm gonna need to fill in. Let's just put a little pond there. And move on. I saw 90 pounds on Amazon, then when I decided to get one, they're 170. Oh, interesting. Yeah, mine was 130. <gasps> They've increased to $270. And then I remembered that you were in American dollars, which isn't, isn't as much as 270 pounds. So, what printer have I got? I've got the Canon Pixma Pro 100S. Now they now have the Pixma Pro 100. No, they now have the Pixma Pro 200, which is the newest version. 
I think they'll probably be pretty much the same, like quality wise, but they don't sell my printer anymore. Guys, should we make something with this? Da -da -da -da. Maybe like I can make a flute with it or something. I'll probably just pop it in the recycling. So it's pretty much dark outside now, and this is how the lights are faring up. And I don't have the ceiling light on right now. What do you think? Not too bad, huh? Cute story. Thanks, Artie. I will have to save it for a while. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's expensive traveling, especially all the way across the other side of the world, huh? Immigration and luggage seems a nightmare from all I'm hearing from friends, like getting stuff to different countries. Oh, okay, I'm just looking right now, and the this is the situation with the sketchbook. It is now off the table, and it is almost, it is this far away from being on the floor. And we have this much to go. Not too much. Let's keep going. I bought a guillotine last year, paid $155. Dollars, best purchase ever. That is a lady who was not scared to use it. <laughs> Have you not cut your fingers off yet, Sarah? If you haven't, I congratulate you. And I'm also shocked. Because that was like literally the first thing I did was almost cut my fingers off. Okay, so this is at the top of, this is near the top of one of them. And this is when the fog came in. So, it's pretty cool. Fog's coming in. You can kind of see the background's getting all hazy. Screw it, I'll just dump it in the water. I think we found the solution. My name is Marianne. Just an old YouTube name I can't get rid of. Okay, Marianne, I'll try and remember that. I probably won't. How long is the sketchbook? It is, and I quote, 3.275 meters. I I completely made that up. Uh, let's see. Does it say on here? It says 14.5 uh, centimeters. That can't be right. I don't know. It is long. <laughs> I don't have my ruler on me, unfortunately. Otherwise, I would measure for you. But it's a long. It's a long boy. I used to do it a lot, no injuries of yet, although I did have one close call. Do you find yours went blunt? Because I found mine went super blunt and that made the whole, it didn't go blunt, but it kind of, it kind of pushed the paper as it was cutting. So I always needed to have cardboard, like a strong, thick cardboard underneath. Otherwise it would, it would like bend the pages of the, of the like the book the book cover if you get what I mean I do a lot of book binding those are super useful for that oh, that's that makes a lot of sense book binding sounds fun I wouldn't mind trying it it just also sounds like a lot of work and I don't need another hobby <laughs> I already have too many I'll be up in your area soon. Super excited. How's the weather so far? All your painters from the Lake District. That's awesome, Bev. Mainly, I hope that they remind you of the Lake District because they all are in the Lake District. Uh, <laughs> I literally haven't drawn anything else apart from the Lake District since I moved. And I was thinking the other day, should I maybe go back to using Pinterest or um, Mac Crunch or something? Because I haven't used any of that for months. But then I was like, no way. I have so much inspiration around me. And I just hope that no one, I mean, even if people were like bored of seeing mountains and stuff, <laughs> which I hope they aren't, I th would still paint them because I just think they're so nice. Um, Bev, where are you going in the Lake District? And also, oh, the weather. The weather has been okay, you know? It said it was meant to rain all last week and it only rained, it rained like every day. Mm, I think it rained every day. But when it says it's gonna rain, it really doesn't rain all day like it rains for you know 20 minutes and then it'll it'll be like you'll see like the clouds coming in and then it'll be like heavy downpour and then it will go on or it'll just be like some light some light drizzle for a couple of hours and then the sun will come out so it's been nice it's been on and off cloudy with sun yeah i think hopefully it'll be nice when you come up someone else cut their finger really bad i can't remember i think it was meg from fizz and flourish yeah she did it literally a week before I did mine. 
and I messaged her on Instagram and I was like, oh my gosh, I have one of those too and I have to be careful. And then I cut my finger, <laughs> cut my finger that week. But yeah, I think she did exactly the same as what I did, cut her thumb, her thumbnail. Basically like clean off. When I went into the ER, they were so confused. They were like, how did you do this? Cause it's such a weird place to have an injury. And I told them I did it on a guillotine, but I'm pretty sure they must have been thinking about like French, the French, you know, off with her head guillotine. Not, not like a paper cutting machine. <laughs> like what the hell were you doing next to a, a guillotine? Like, was it a reenactment or something? Uh, I think I definitely confused them, which was fun. Okay, moving on. That one's definitely a messy one. I think I'm like getting messy as I go. Oh, and also the book is on the floor now. So hopefully it's dry down there. It's not blunt, but I'm generally trying to find a new blade. I work at a paper conservatory. I don't even know what that is, but it sounds fantastic. Talk about blunt cutters. We have to pack the cutters with tons of scrap paper to get a clean cut. Hmm, that's interesting. What's a paper conservatory? Because that sounds incredibly interesting. Drives me nuts. They're a conservatory for goods and sakes. I don't know what a con I don't know what a conservatory is. In my mind, it's a little room off of your lounge that's all made of glass, and it gets too hot in the summer and too cold in the winter. That's a conservatory. I got a crafter's companion guillotine and it seems a bit safer, though only if for cutting paper and card. Crafter's companion. That sounds like it would be made, like made for you, for us. Okay, so this is when the fog really came in. And this was, this is actually the third, I got lost earlier. This is the third mountain, the third peak um, called Red Screes. And this is actually the one that we, we did the whole walk just so we could go up Red Screes. Cause we see Red Screes from nearly every walk we do. Um, you can kind of see it from a lot of the walks in the area. And we've always been intrigued by it cause it always looks so fun, like the shape of it. And then, uh, yeah, it got really foggy towards the top, the top until basically we couldn't see anything. And then Martin was really bummed out cause he really wanted to see the top of Red Screes. So I said, we'll have to go up again, but from a different angle. So uh, yeah, we're gonna do that again. Staying near New Sorry and visiting Beatrix Polar Farmhouse and I want to go to that place with the best gingerbread cookies. Ah, yeah, grass made gingerbread. I don't know what near Sorry is, I haven't been there before. And I haven't actually even been to Beatrix Polar's house yet. I was gonna go with Martin's mum when she came, but we didn't go in the end. That's what I thought of when you said you had a big guillotine, a huge one, like for cutting people's heads off. All right, I'm just gonna basically smush all of this with, with white and hope it looks foggy. Yes, be foggy, my friend. Kind of looks foggy a little bit. It's a little bit of dirt down here, which is nice. I haven't had a brown in, the, in here yet. I don't really use the brown normally. And I added this rock, it's not actually there in real life, but just need to sound to like break up the foreground or something, I don't know. Oh guys, this is such a long sketchbook. We have three more spreads to go. And then what's the time? Okay, we haven't been streaming for long, but I'm not gonna wait for this to dry because it's gonna take forever. So we'll see what time it is when I finish. So we teach classes, but also have art exhibits. We make paper, marble paper, book binding, and we have Van de Cook letterpress machine. I don't know what that is, that sounds fancy. Amongst lots of artsy activities. That does sound fun. It's almost like an activity center. That sounds amazing. I wanna do your job. Grassmere gingerbread is amazing. It's pretty good. Um, sadly though, so when we first moved to the Lake District in November, we went to Grassmere a lot, and we probably had the gingerbread like maybe six times. And it's really good. Martin likes it a lot better than I do. But then I think it was last year, late last year, 
something on Twitter they were talking about. Someone was saying that it wasn't vegan anymore because it used to be, it's made with the recipe they say it's like a 130 year old recipe, the original recipe or whatever. And it's always accidentally been vegan because they don't use any animal products in it. And then apparently they've changed their recipe. They've added, I don't know if they've added milk or butter or eggs or something to it, but now it's no longer vegan. But it's not even the fact that it's not vegan anymore because I never really, I mean, I liked it, but I wasn't like in like with it. But the fact is, you can't just change a 130 year old recipe and then still tell people it's a 130 year old recipe. All right, guys, I wasn't gonna have a rant about grass my gingerbread, but I guess we're doing it now. <laughs> so that was my rant. So yes, go there, Bev, enjoy the gingerbread. Uh, I'm sure it will still taste delicious, but just know in the back of your mind, I am very disappointed in them. I'm a strongly worded letter, if I, be bothered which I can't okay it's a wonderful place I love spending time there I teach no book binding there but don't work there full time that sounds so like such a rewarding job all right here we go so this at the top that's the view from the top literally nothing and then this is going down so this is going down to the last one we had to go down this lovely steep hill which I'm just thinking now actually kind of looks like it goes up again but it's in the sketch I've drawn, but it doesn't. Martian took a photo from here, it's on his Instagram. It's really pretty. There was this, this couple that kind of overtook us as we were stopping to take photos, and Martin took a photo of them. <laughs> Which I, I don't know, I don't know if it's a bit creepy. I, I, I think it's a bit creepy, but he said that it tells a story, so I just kind of went with it. That's a shame about the recipe, I had no idea they'd done that. Yeah, I didn't know either. I just came up with, oh, sorry I brought it up. No, it's fine, I was just joking, Bev. I'm just kidding. What would you do if footwear disappeared? Um, go, I'd go barefoot, I guess. Uh, hi, Maddie, what would you do if footwear disappeared? Funny thing is, I actually love being barefoot. I walk around the garden and the house all the time barefoot, even in winter, and Yes, I have had glass on my foot twice in the last month. I don't know how. I broke a pickle jar, it dropped out of the fridge. And then about a week later, I broke another jar. I can't remember what it was, but I basically broke two jars in the space of a week. And I guess I hadn't cleaned up all the glass in the kitchen because I did find glass on my foot twice and it was very painful. But it won't stop me. Can't stop me, won't stop me. I'll still walk around barefoot. I'm not actually that big of a fan of shoes. I mean, I wear them because society tells me I need to, but I'm not one of those people that are, get excited about shoes. Love being barefoot too, but developed plantar fasciitis. Oh, pain in my heel. That's interesting. I thought that you would get plantar fasciitis more if you wore a lot of shoes. Cause I got it when I was, um, doing lots of running when I was training for when I was training for like marathons in 2019 I got plantar fasciitis super bad and it's because my running shoes I guess and also you know overuse but I always have heard that the the best way like the most healthiest thing for your feet is actually to go barefoot because that's like basically how your your feet were designed like if you think about it your feet weren't designed to be in shoes you know, like we weren't designed to do lots of things. I like sit down at desks all day and I don't know, play golf. Um, lots of weird things that we do that if, you know, back in the day when we were apes or whatever, we weren't meant to. So sticking your feet into shoes is kind of an odd thing when you think about it. But I try not to have deep thoughts too much. So I don't really try to think about things like that. Okay, so as you can tell, I'm getting super lazy right now. <laughs> um, but it's fine, it's fine. Maybe we can go over this too. I'm just adding like random colors now, just cause I'm bored. Okay, um, moving on, second to last, I believe that's what they call the penultimate uh, in intelligent circles. The penultimate spread. The sketchbook is kind of snaking on itself right under the table. I have the opposite problem. 
Oh, here we go. I miss Wendy. I have a really weird thing with my feet and I really don't like them uncovered. I almost always wear slippers. Even in the hottest part of summer, I would still have a light pair of ankle socks. Oh no, you gotta let, them, you gotta let your feet breathe, Wendy. I have the opposite problem. After a car accident, I needed to redevelop my foot muscles so I can't wear shoes nearly as much as, hmm, interesting. Apparently both wearing the wrong shoes and not wearing shoes can both cause it. Oh, I didn't know that. That's interesting. Some days I get gout too. Oh, I've heard gout is so, is so painful. All right, so this one here is at the last, on the top of the last um, peak. And it's the Khan up there, or Khan, Khan, Khan. It's basically the point that says, hey, you've reached the top. And they kind of all, they look like this, or they look like the other one here on this page. This one. So they all look like this, like they've been built. And, or they look just like a pile of stones like this. What about barefoot shoes? Shoes. I've never worn barefoot shoes. They were super crazed in the running community a few years ago. The ones they have like little, little spaces for your toes to go in. I've never worn them. I don't think I'd like to because uh, having something in between my toes, I don't like it. Like I don't like flip flops because I don't like the bit that goes in between your toes. I wear socks year round. I have plantar fasciitis too. My Asus tennis shoes have helped tremendously. When I had plantar fasciitis, um, I wore compression socks in bed because <clears throat> I heard that helps. They kind of these socks, they don't have toes and they kind of go up your ankle and they're really, really tight. And so apparently the plantar fasciitis, what I was reading about when I had it, is when you sleep your, your foot, um, like relaxes or something I don't know and it does something to the muscle in your in your foot so the compression socks kept keep your feet like almost not stretched out but they keep them from kind of I don't know I'm not a scientist or a medical professional <laughs> but I used to wear these socks and they used to really help me so maybe if you guys have plantar fasciitis and you've never heard that before you can like check out the socks online see if that helps I can see the end me too it's right here <laughs> I sleep with bare feet, that counts, yes. Martin sleeps with socks in the bed in winter and I think that's so odd. I hate sleeping in, in the bed with socks. Makes me just feel like I'm like closed in, you know? Used to love shoes, having a hard time, having a hard time feeling pretty going barefoot everywhere. Yeah, some people love, like, it's the fashion, isn't it, with the shoes. I just never, I don't know, I guess I'm, even with, with clothes and everything like that, I'm always just about comfort than fashion. I just, I've never, I've never been fashionable, ever. <laughs> ever. So, yeah, like, even at home, like, when we do go out, I just put my running shoes, whatever, like, they're purple for crying out loud. They don't go with anything. I brought a pair of Doc Martens when I went to... Newcastle a few months ago we went to visit my mum and I've been watching Doc Martens for ages I've always wanted Doc Martens like not always but probably for the last five years or so and I always thought I just wasn't cool enough to wear Doc Martens I don't know like they just seems it seems like people that wear them are really like secure about themselves I don't know why I feel that way I just do uh, so I, I just took the plunge and I brought a pair of Doc Martens and I guys I never wear them I haven't even um, what's that word when you wear them until they're comfortable? I haven't even done that. Like I tried to, I wore them around the house for almost a week and they did not get comfortable. <laughs> They've been sitting in the porch for months and I feel really bad because they were expensive. And every time I look at them, I think I should really try and wear those. I've heard they're really comfortable once you break them in. That's the phrase I was looking for. All right, we're just gonna get through this last page, guys, and we're there. I can see the home stretch right now. We'll have to tr check if compression socks work with gout. Yeah, I'm not sure if they were, I can't remember if they were actual compression socks or if they're a special kind, like maybe not as tight. But yeah, definitely look into it and let me know how it goes. You have a very, you have normal looking shoes, but they, 
but they, but they say it feels more natural. Would love to try them, but find it a bit pricey. What's that one? The blueberry. Good morning. Good morning, Jamie. It's actually, I don't have my watch on. It's actually nine o'clock here at night, but good morning to you. How are you? This looks like a very interesting project. Yes. Um, well, I'm glad that you said that. I'm glad that you said interesting and not, this looks like a train wreck of a project. Because I must say, I have been losing the plot a little bit over the last half an hour. Um, we're making an accordion sketchbook. And the people that have been here since the beginning have heard me say this like four times. <laughs> Guys, just tune out, okay? You don't need to listen to this part. Um, I've been making an accordion sketchbook of a walk that I did a while ago. And I've almost got to the end of the page. And also, this isn't neon green. I don't know why it's picking it up on the camera. It's neon green. It's not. This is a hair of mine. I'll just remove that. And this is how long it is. And it just keeps going. It just keeps going. Okay. So I'm going to put it back on the floor very gently. Shh, go to sleep. And we're almost on the last page. So basically, I'm stringing together a whole bunch of photos from a walk I did a while ago. And I'm using the old jelly gouache because I thought it would be nice and easy. And it is easy because you don't have to mix anything. You can just shove your paintbrush in. But, um, yes, I have kind of been <laughs> wanting to get through it because it has been a long painting session. Um, Katie's going. Bye, Katie. Thanks for popping in. Oh, I love your paintings and your wealth of knowledge. Bev, you make me feel old with my wealth of knowledge, but thank you. I used to love wearing heels. I feel so short running around everywhere on my bare soles. I've never worn heels in my life. I think I wore them once. I tried them on in a department store and I looked in the, you know, the, the mirror when you can see the shoes and I just laughed and laughed and laughed and I thought, well, this isn't for me. All right, cool. So we're on the last one. This is at the, at the end of the walk. We've come down the mountain now and this is the end, the end of the mountain. I'm just going to kind of smush it into this page on the left here and just kind of blend it in. And it would be nice if I could kind of get some of the colors right. Like not all the colors, just some of them. It's hard to find good shoes that fit, especially with small or wider problem feet. Found a good pair of teen boy shoes that are comfy. Yeah, all of my um, running shoes are guys. I have wide feet as well, so. Uh, it is hard. It is hard when you have wide feet. Not, I have, I think my feet are size seven and a half or eight or maybe seven. I don't know. I can never remember. <laughs> They're a size 41 in European sizes, if you guys know what that is. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's really hard. They never have them on display because they only have the very dainty feet on display, like size four or five in shops. But it's fine. My mum has bigger feet than me. She's a size nine. So at least I didn't inherit her feet. That would have made things a lot harder. Such a fantastic, cool idea. Long term project. It's for the week. So not that long. This, this soggy piece of, look at this. I can squeeze this out. It's so wet. Look, watch. absolutely useless okay final last resort I have this cloth here because I knew I was gonna run out of paper it is getting a bit dark in here now that all the um, lights are off let me turn on the main light quickly and see how that works oh cool uh, that's the, the main light on. I think it's a bit better. It's a bit more shadowy here, though. It's going to be winter soon, too, so I'm going to be doing all my streams in the dark. Like, not winter soon, but... God, we have to get through autumn first. My favourite month. My favourite season. Okay. What's everyone saying? I love the shiny stilettos in all the shops and even tried them on, but I would never be able to wear them. I would definitely fall down and die. I mean, I'm not very good just in, you know, no more, no more shoes. Okay, I don't want this all to be the same green. It's a bit boring. I 
I was so tired by the end of this walk, guys. The um, place that we walked down, like the mountainside that we walked down was so, so steep. And it was literally never ending. And it was so steep that you were smushing, like your toes would smush down into the very tip of your shoes, like the whole time. I got blisters on my toes from the smushing. But I think we have successfully made a very muddy, <laughs> a very muddy last page here. Wow, nice April, you'd fit men's shoes too. Mine unfortunately only three and a half. Wow, you got tiny little feet, Artie. Like dainty little feet. I wish you got, we got proper seasons here at Los Angeles. I'll be hot until November. Yeah, you guys, I don't think I could ever live in LA. Well, I definitely couldn't. I mean, I don't think I'd be allowed to move there, but even if I, even if I was, <laughs> I don't know why I wouldn't be allowed to move. I haven't, like I don't have a criminal past or anything. I just don't think they'll let me in. <laughs> I used to want to live in America when I was a kid though. Like that was my dream to live in America. It was literally, like I would dream about it physically in my sleep um not anymore though now if i was going to move anywhere i think i'd move to spain i usually have a whole roll of paper towel that i use to clean and dry my brush yeah i normally do two but um we got to the end and we actually need to buy some more i think that was the last in the house you stopped growing at the age of 12 oh okay i've lost the screens was that a new be right back screen Nope, it's the same one. It's the same screen. Uh, I've had them for ages. I It's got Digby, my character run, that I made like last year. And I was thinking about changing it, but I th I'm just going to keep it because I'm lazy. <laughs> You're always welcome here. LA takes some getting used to. You've been here for ages and still not really used to it. I, but I went to LA once when... Um, I can't really say I went to LA. I... I got I went from the airport to the Greyhound bus the Greyhound bus station in the center of town and then I got on a train and then I got on a bus to go somewhere else. So I haven't really been there, but I would like to go. I'd like to visit. I just don't I just couldn't live anywhere that didn't have seasons. I just love seasons too much. I love the changing. I love all the trees changing, everything, all the colours changing. Okay, so we've done it. Guys, we did it. Um who was asking about the paint earlier? I can't remember. Emmy said we was going to do a little test to see how the paint had um, soaked in. Let me know if that was you. Because now we're going to test out the paint. So I just... So I've let it soak for a lot. how long? Half an hour maybe? And you can see now it's like super ooey gooey. It's still hard, like you'll need to probably put some glycerin in there and, and give it a good soak. But I mean, look, that's pretty good. You could definitely paint with that. That's a nice, good color there. The Greyhound station is terrifying. Yeah, it was, it was pretty scary. <laughs> I took the Greyhound from San Francisco. That's what I did. So yeah, I did like this cross country tour um, it was amazing. It was one of the best things I've ever done in my life. It was 16 days. It wasn't a cross country. It started from and finished in San Francisco. And it was on this bus called the Green Tortoise. It was a Green Tortoise bus tour, tour bus. And it's kind of like super hippie. Like everyone, um, you slept on the bus it, or, and everyone made their food together. And then you did all these hikes. And we did it of the national parks in the Western national parks. And it was one of the best trips I've ever done in my entire life. And then we finished in San Francisco. I took a bus from San Francisco to LA overnight on the Greyhound. <laughs> and it was, yeah, sketchy. And then I had to get across the road from the Greyhound to another bus that took me to the airport. And that was my entire time in LA. So definitely saw the sights. What do you use to split your screen up like that? Hmm. Bev, do you see my screen? Um, I'm not sure if you sh I'm not sure what you're talking about, but I have an iPad down here and I am I'm screening, I'm doing like um a screen share, I guess. So it's almost acting like another screen. So I have my OBS on there and then I have everything else on screen. 
Are you gonna film and share the rest of this? Yes, I am. I should have really been filming like now, but I'm actually using my camera as a webcam. But I may do a little, um, I may take this stream later, save it, and then cut it up a little bit for the intro. But I'm gonna do the rest of it this week. So I'm not gonna do any more tonight because it still has to dry. And I have 11 spreads and I'm gonna be busy on Sunday because Martin's family's here and Saturday night. So I really only have tomorrow morning, Friday morning, and Saturday day. So not long, but we can do it. <laughs> we can do it, guys. It's only 11 tiny spreads. Like, it won't even be that hard. <laughs> I love the confidence in myself. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you all of them. I can't show you at all. They're not dry. Here we go. Look, I can bring the ends together. Bing! Um, I'm just gonna leave that. What's the time? It's actually nine o'clock. I know it's been a short one tonight, but I might actually head off now because if I start another spread, I'm still holding the ends of these two. If I start another um, page, we'll be here for another hour and I can feel my throat going already. I think basically what I need to do on streaming nights, I need to finish work early, like do a flexi so I start early and I finish early, and then I can have an early dinner, and then I can start streams at 6.30 instead of 7.30, and then it won't be so late, because after about like 9 o'clock, like 9.30, my brain goes into sleep mode, and <laughs> I kind of stop functioning, because I get up at I get up at quarter to six in the morning, and I, I, I come down here, and I try and draw before work, or I go and... Um, upstairs and edit YouTube videos. So I've already, I've been up since like six already. So yeah, I'm kind of tired now. <laughs> Bedtime is coming up in an hour, guys. It looks great. Ah, oh, thanks, Artie. Um, can't wait to see the final result. Me neither. The paint looks so much better after you soaked it. Yes. This isn't this isn't the paint. I don't even know why I showed you that. <laughs> this one here. Yes. So that's was just. And then don't forget, you can also use this. You can get this online too. It's really cheap. You can get, I got three for like maybe a couple of pounds. Uh, otherwise I'll try honey noodles too. And yes, try that. I hope you have a nice time with your family. It's Martin's family. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> no, I'm sure we'll have a nice time. Uh, we're going to have to Pizza Express for dinner. So that'll be nice. Uh, thanks for allowing us to actually paint. Bev, anytime. Thanks for joining me. I'm just happy that you're here to keep me company. Thank you. Uh, can't wait either to see the rest. Can't wait. Okay. Thanks, people. You're so funny. Thank you, Nina. I try. I'm glad I got to join. Yay. Okay. So thanks, guys, for popping in. I'm sorry it was a short one tonight and we didn't really do much. But thanks so much for keeping me company, as always. I hope that you like the new setup. I'm going to keep tweaking on it, try and get the lights right, especially as it gets into winter. But I think we've made a good, a good change by coming down here. Upstairs was too dark and too cramped. Um, so, yeah. Um, join me again next week. Maybe we'll start earlier if I can. I'm not sure if that's going to suit everyone But uh, if you can't come in earlier, just pop in whenever you can Okay, so that's all for me. Have a lovely rest of your night um, I have a YouTube video up. I put it up today if you haven't seen it So check it out and I will catch you around the internet. All right I'm gonna find the last screen to say goodbye. Okay. Bye guys